What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Today on the show, Dana White has lost his ever-loving mind, y'all. An NCAA-style tournament for baseball? Maybe. Super Mario Williams has Oklahoma at the top of his list. He's a top 2021 wide receiver. Matt Rule is just trying to fly the Temple Owls south to Carolina. The Chargers and the Rams have new logos, but my goodness, man, are is anybody else excited about that except the Chargers and the Rams? Larry Fitzgerald is way better at catching passes than we even thought. The cost of the delay in the Olympics is like $6 billion, among other things. And Jake Fromm did not stay at home. I'm glad that you are, and you're following the advice of public health professionals, unlike many in this country. But first, check it. Andrew McGregor at Mountain View College was kind enough to talk with me about politics in pigskin, particularly college football. Now, one of the things I think is interesting that he and others have pointed out is between the 1930s and 1950s, many universities, particularly those in rural states like Georgia, Kentucky, Nebraska, and Oklahoma, invested in athletic programs to bring national attention to their schools, right? Creating identities like Big Red and Big Blue. These things pleased taxpayers and alumni like me and extended affiliation of these booster colleges, in quotes, to places like, you know, University of Oklahoma. So university leaders hoped that this could kind of help politicians see the value of their schools and inspire the legislators to increase appropriations for them, right? But at schools like Georgia and Oklahoma, spending on athletics quickly outshone academics, causing a rift among citizens politicians, and of course, university leaders, folks that are like, you know, faculty. English departments famously don't like football programs. I am one such member that, you know, lives in both worlds. And that was always interesting because, you know, I have conversations with athletic folks about what it means to have a really robust composition program. And then the folks that I was trying to sell composition programs to were like, hey, we just here for the sports and vice versa. And that only got exacerbated. And one of the stories that we all know, and I still love to tell folks that don't know University of Oklahoma football like we do here in Tulsa, is that George Lynn Cross once flippantly replied to a state senator who questioned why the school needed more funding. Hey, I would like to build a university which the football team can be proud of. Now, Cross sought to assert the importance of funding for teachers and the classroom and that those things educate, you know, football players. But many elected officials and donors preferred to fund football where wins on the gridiron provide a more immediate and enjoyable result. So today, college football remains a top priority, while overall, universities continue to fund and fund and fund from, in some cases, just the football team, in other cases, not at all. At a place like the University of Oklahoma where they're in the black, and at one point, the universe, the athletic department is subsidizing the university, don't really have that issue. But there are funds in place that are football only, especially at private institutions. It is not uncommon for a person with a large sum of money to say, I want to give money to the university, and they'd say, what part? The football program. Wait a second, we would love to use some of that money for something else. Yeah. But it's my money. So if you want it, it's going to football. But what if we don't have a university to fund, but we can only fund the football team? That is your problem. That's where they come to live and breathe on these things. Because coaches are the public face of a team and also the university and the state. And many cases around the country, the football coach is the highest paid state employee. That's true in our state. The two highest paid employees in the state Lincoln Riley and Mike Gundy, right? University of Oklahoma Regent Lloyd Noble, yeah, that one, personally recruited Biff Jones to his school in 1930 and even offered to personally pay part of his salary if the university could not afford to make him a competitive offer. 
This is the other reason for which we could see big time boosters have such a say, sometimes the only say, in who was going to be the head coach at their university. One of my favorite stories is Bobby Langham going up to Bobby Petrino and saying, do you want Tommy Tuberville's job? This just after Tuberville had one of the great seasons in Auburn history in 2004. Another, you know, the late Boone Pickens said, hey, I'm hiring Les Miles. Well, you're not actually the athletic director. Cool, give me my money back, right? We've seen this with Texas A&M. They had a regent that publicly commented on the job status of one Kevin Sumlin. And then a year later, Kevin Sumlin was got up out the paint. Now, legislators have tried to intervene directly in college football matters, and that almost never happens and ends well, right, when it does. But we still live in this world where it feels like Texas Governor Ann Richards put her thumb on the scale to get Baylor into the Big 12 Conference, right? To which we would all say, who is Baylor in the Big 12? We also know that Bob Bullock helped secure Texas Tech's entry into the Big 12. These actions have gone back as far as there's been college football. But what I find most interesting about it is when we, as college football constituents, choose to exercise our power. Mostly in a mob mentality. You'll remember Tennessee fans famously picketed the would-be hiring of Greg Schiano and then talked themselves out of Mike Leach. And now they got to deal with Mike Leach anyway because he's at Mississippi State. So it is no wonder to me that political football in college pigskin has led to the sport exploiting TV money like the price of pork bellies and frozen orange juice, like Billy Ray and Lewis trading places to appease Randolph and Mortimer. And Randolph and Mortimer, in this particular instance, has to be none other than ABC and Fox. And if you really want to get into it, CBS and NBC. This is the reason why I believe we'll have college football sooner rather than later, even in a pandemic, because the money at the top has stopped. And if the money at the top stops, it does not in the words of one Ronald Reagan, trickle down. There is no trickle down economics when the faucet is off. Everybody's losing loot. Nobody wants to lose loot. And in a country where we have learned if you don't work, you don't eat, and we're getting told not to work, it ain't going to work for us. We are not an idle people. And yet, it feels as if, if we are not idle, we won't be able to work later. So while we continue to think about these things, think about them from your couch, okay? Think about the loss of money from the couch. Don't try to go out there and earn it because, well, you're only going to make it worse. And that, as they say, is a paradox. Yeesh. When we come back, let's have ourselves a discussion about what it is Dana White thinks he's going to do in this very weird place of having no live sports where he believes he's going to be the live sport back on first. We got more ways than ever for you to listen to the sports animal on radio, of course, on 97.1, 96.1 FM in the Grand Lake area and 101.1 FM in the Bartlesville area on our free app, Sports Animal Tulsa. You can stream it on our website, sportsanimalradio.com and on your Alexa or dot. We're your home for sports, the sports animal. You're listening to the RJ Young Show on your home for sports, the sports animal.